Welcome to this overview video of the upstream oil and gas financial model from efinancialmodels.com. Before we start, if you like to see more videos from us, please push the subscribe button below. The purpose of this model is to evaluate an investment in an upstream oil and gas investment project. The model prepares a business plan and also runs through a simple profit sharing agreement between the project's promoter which is the channel partner and the project's investors, which are the limited partners. So let's jump right into the model and let me show you how this works. The model is structured in three main worksheets, which A is the executive uh, summary. Then another important worksheet are the, is the financials worksheet, where you have all the uh, financial uh, projections. And third, <coughs> we do have a worksheet with the profit split model, which basically splits the profits between the general and the limited partners. In if this worksheet uh, <coughs> has, if this worksheet should slow down, the reason can be that this is uh, caused by these sensitivity tables. What happens is that every time you move something or you press enter the model calculates through all these tables if you if this takes too much time the trick here is that you basically change here the settings so that <coughs> the model is updated except for these data tables so that would be the the trick <coughs> to make this model faster if you don't want every time to wait until these tables are updated so the way this model works is that we have um, main, the main assumptions, which are basically our projections of the oil price and our, um, our ramp-up schedule of the planned oil production. This basically will form the company's um, revenue um, line, which you can see is basically oil produced and then basically multiplied by the by the old price but you also can see that in this model we only uh, we can actually uh, cut the production at a certain point of time and this is done by an important assumption which is basically the project lifespan so if we expect that this project will <coughs> last 20 years or 25 years we can easily <coughs> um, change the setting here and you see the cash flows will then either stop or continue <coughs> um, as as we uh, as we chose chose here so i set it back to <coughs> to 20 years to um, make it um, to have the settings as we had before then the second important settings are the operating uh, costs we basically need to know how much um, are our yearly <coughs> uh, costs we have here the costs per barrel but also the fixed uh, costs so when we uh, run uh, create our income statements uh, operating costs are the variable costs based on these 30 dollars a barrel or it can also be any other amount you simply can change here the assumptions and then it will be the model will basically update update it um, this basically will form the basis for your income statement then another important sections are is basically the um, required investment which it takes to basically start the project here this is done high level that means you can simply enter the amount of the total investment required you can then split it down to the uh, different uh, cost items we have here different capex costs like the geological exploration drilling wells uh, the acquisition for eventual property and and drilling rights but then also operating costs these all these costs here they will go into into an item a line item which flows through the income statement which is the setup cost so the principle is that you can <coughs> easily create a business case by changing these uh, these assumptions or expanding them as you as you need it then the main uh, purpose of this model is you want to figure out if your project makes uh, economic sense for this you need to calculate the project's uh, IRR and also want to see if you use some debt financing how it is affecting 
your project's uh, feasibility. What you have here in the financial sheet are basically uh, two. Uh, uh, basically, first you have a complete uh, uh, income statement, then the balance sheet forecast, and the cash flow forecast. This is all basically uh, done via the model. And then, <clears throat> based on that, what we do is we calculate the free cash flow to firm, and then we calculate what is the project's uh, IRR. And in the second step, we also look at what happens if we use some debt financing to partly fund some of the, of the costs. And so this can help us to tweak the IRR a little bit, uh, <clears throat> a little bit up. We also have here, in terms of debt financing, two phases. One is uh, during the time where there is a lot of risk, which normally does not uh, get us a lot of debt financing. Uh, this is the first three years. And then afterwards, we also have a debt uh, schedule, which uh, would allow us to, to uh, <clears throat> simulate what happens if you use some more debt financing later on. And you can simply add or add some more debt financing you want to, or you envisage to, to obtain. Or for instance, here another 10 million, voila. <clears throat> and depending on that, you can then check back and see A, what happens to your equity IRR. So you see now that we can push the IRR a bit up, but also you want to check what happens to your, um, to your um, <clears throat> the leverage ratio, especially financial debt, EBITDA, if these are aggressive or conservative. Then, depending on that, and depending on your risk preference, you can you can fine tune them. But you also need to keep in mind if that's actually something a bank would finance. So, but in any case, the model gives you the flexibility to play around with these assumptions. Then, another item we have here is a DCF valuation. This is basically a bit similar like the project IRR, except that we don't calculate calculate the IRR, but actually we calculate the project's NPV. For this, we have to assume a discount rate. This, of course, is quite sensitive to whatever discount rates we choose, but based on the industry, you should obtain, be able to obtain an idea what discount rate is being used, and then you it can give you another data point to figure out what would be the DCF value of your project. Um, then, once you have the project IRR calculated. What you also want to do is you want to run sensitivities and you want to see what happens if we change some of these assumptions. So in this case, what just to be sure, it's updating <coughs> again. We make that the tables are updated. So what's happening here is if the oil price increases, then basically your project becomes more profitable and this is reflected in the IRR. You see that in this case we can figure any 5% change of our variables. We can see that in that case the oil price would have the biggest effect on the project's feasibility. Then <clears throat> the second biggest effect is how much um, volume we can get out of our drilling. So this has is the second effect, but with the help of our sensitivity table, we also see it's <clears throat> the effect is lower than the oil price. And what we do is we run through the sensitivities on all our parameters, and we can then <clears throat> uh, create this tornado diagram so that we can get a better view what are the key, um, key value drivers of our project. And here we can do this for the project IRR, but also we can calculate this for the equity IRR, depending what variable we, we choose. Then another aspect of this model is basically uses and so sources of funds. Uh, based on our budget, we can we have um, a view what, um, what uh, funding is required. There is some There are some algorithms and formulas in there in case we need some more financing to, uh, to build up networking capital. This is a correction here. And on the sources of fund sides, we can assume how much debt financing we can obtain. All the rest normally will need to be financed through equity. But in this case, uh, the <coughs> eventually we can get some debt financing. So this is basically 
to to figure out what would be the <clears throat> the main financing structure once we know how much equity financing is needed we can now drill down and basically figure out from where this equity financing needs to come from and how we need to organize our fund raising and this is uh, the structure here where we basically have one general partner which is the promoter of the projects and all the LP investors everybody needs to put some money in everybody gets a stake and in this model what we assume is that the general partner because he's managing the project and he needs to be incentivized that he gets a promote that he gets or or a carry as an incentive which means um, this we have a small waterfall model this is very simple what we assume is that from the levered uh, cash flows which goes to the investors we basically um, what we do is we take uh, the levered cash flow for each investors if the capital has not been repaid we want to first make sure the capital is being repaid if it's not then only five percent of of that cash flow to the investor goes as a um, promote to the general partner so it's deducted here all the rest goes into repaying the principal amount in this case <clears throat> what we can see is that the original uh, investment is repaid with uh, within three years and then once this is done what we do is we change the promote incentive and then the <clears throat> general partner gets a higher percentage of the free cash flow in this case it jumps from five to 10% and then 10% of this investor's cash flow is deducted and will go into the pockets of the general uh, partner. Of course, this is just a very simple um, profit <coughs> sharing screen. One could also run something more complex, but it's just to show a bit um, what, <coughs> what, how the maybe, or just to, to simulate a bit the effect of. Um, of a standard profit sharing uh, scheme. What we then also want to do is to uh, have an overview and we want to see how much, what is the resulting IRR the investor can expect and you will see the channel partner <coughs> is benefiting from the promote so his profits are higher and also his IRR is higher which incentivizes him to execute this um, this project we then also have apart from IRR a, uh, an average cash on cash yield in case uh, you feel like you don't want to rely on IRR because this assumes you have to reinvest your proceeds at the same at the same uh, as a similar type of project or with a similar type of return which might not be the case so another way to look at it is to figure out what is the average uh, cash on cash yield the project produces and if you want to do buy and hold this might be the figure you want to also take into account in your consideration so then on the executive summary sheet we basically have here the full overview what returns we can expect and we can also um, <coughs> show this in a, in a graph uh, so that we have <coughs> full transparency on the profitability of the project actually for investors so this is more or less what you can do with this uh, model we hope this walkthrough was useful if yes please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com a link to the model is included in the description below thank you for watching